Okay guys, this is my account of the trials and tribulations of CNC net making. So I know there are folks out there everywhere on the internet talking about how CNC work is cheating. And that all you have to do is throw some stock in the machine, press start, and possibly that's true for some. It's not for me. I've never ruined a neck I made by hand. I have, however, ruined many necks in the CNC. I'll try to explain why these parts are so hard to make in the CNC. While the results are usually far superior to hand carved necks and more dimensionally accurate, the failure rate is high for one-off parts like this. With all that room for error and the tolerance stack against you, it takes a great deal of attention to detail to succeed. Necks are difficult parts to CNC. First of all, they rarely have square or straight edges to indicate from. And second, they're all curvy-like, on the back and stuff which is nice for playing, but not so nice for making. Tolerance stack, indication points, complex tool paths, and the depths of Z-axis travel are all issues that make these parts a challenge. In addition to these concerns, I'm also cutting without dust collection and cutting in multiple setups to form the complex geometry of this part. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I got you out here to really show you what's going on. I know I'm going to get a ton of questions about how I do my setup for the neck. This is a really complex neck um, with a bunch of setups, but I got all the setups all set up here on the machine so I can run you through what we're going to do and then hopefully it makes a little bit more sense when you see it running on the machine how I got to those positions. So I've got all this stuff up here, I got all this set up. So let me bring you in for a closer angle so you can see what's going on here and I'll explain each part. We have our scarf joint neck blank. Um, they, we've got the headstock veneer installed. We've got it cut to stock dimensions, um, the same dimensions that we have in Fusion 360. So first step, the first setup we're gonna do is we're gonna take this joined edge. I've joined the edge of this stock right here. and I've cut this piece with two surfaces that have been actually cut with the CNC machine. So these are true 
to the x-axis on this machine. My, I'm going to set up the first setup like this, and we're going to cut out the head. So I'm going to do a rough cut and then a cleanup cut on the slots. And then we're going to do the outline as a rough and a cleanup as well. And then we're going to do that little contour divot that you get into the slots on this style of guitar. I have uh, two pieces of quarter saw maple that I've cut to a quarter inch. Um, and these are going to be support um, in the neck, inside the neck. And then I've also got a truss rod as well. So I'm going to set up like this for those cuts. And this is the main reason we haven't glued this block on is this. So I'm going to set up here. I'm going to cut those slots for these, these two parts. I'm going to cut the truss rod slot. And then, I'm going to, and then once those get glued in place, we're just going to leave it overnight. In the morning, we'll come back and surface off these, sand them off nice and clean, and then we'll be ready to pull it off again. And then we will uh, we'll glue on this block. And once the block is glued on, um, then I'm going to do a single operation. I'll set it up just like this again. Um, and I'm going to do an operation where I surface this surface of the block, right? Um, because I kind of have a rough surface back here on the back. But in order to get that perfectly square, first thing I'm going to do is surface this surface. So then I'll take it and remount in here. Now I've, so I can set that up in here because I've got a flat surface here and a flat surface here. I'll set them up in here and then I'll cut this to the exact dimension from here to here that it should be in the model. Um, at that point, we'll be able to set it up um, for our final setup, and that'll be just like this. I have this support block up here that I've just run the scallop tool path, that same tool path that we used to cut um, the scarf joint. Um, I just glued up a couple pieces of MDF uh, with some hot glue, put them in here, and then ran that scallop tool path so that we get something to support this headstock while we're cutting the back of it. A little clamp set up, even though we'll have the tape and super glue set up in here, but um, as you're milling out parts in the neck, um, you start losing support, and especially here on this heel block, you know, it, it comes up quite a bit from the surface, and as you're milling up here, it can apply a lot of force to that um, tape and super glue. So I have this clamp and these just threaded rod that go right through the bottom of the bed. <laughs> so we'll do the rough cuts here on the heel, um, we'll do the finished passes on the heel. That's all just with a half inch in mill. That we're gonna do the half inch, we'll, we'll remove this clamp. We'll do the half inch in mill, just roughing out the back of the neck. And then I'll do a three quarter inch ball mill to shape the finished shape of the back of the neck. And then there's a little bit of stock left on the back of this peg head. And I finish up the back of this peg head with the scallop tool path. And that's pretty much it, and then we'll be done. So, so, um, so I'm gonna set this up for the first cut and uh, let's get going.
cheers to all you guys out there um, keeping up. I um, hope you got everything you wanted for Christmas. I got some great stuff for making instruments. I got my wife got me this set of the Isotunes headphones. I'm not affiliated with them, but they're awesome. I really like them for out there, for the work out there in the shop. And uh, also got one of these RZ masks. These things are great for the dust, keeping your sinuses and lungs clean for the work we're doing here. It's, you know, it's a, it's a little bit different video. Uh, I tried a lot of different stuff in this video. Um, uh, trying some of the stuff that the great YouTube videos that I really like. Um, Paul Jackman, I think his video is really funny. This old Tony, I think his videos are really funny. And I'm just trying to see what it's like to make videos like theirs. If you hated it, let me know. <laughs> if you loved it, please let me know. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and, uh, and let's keep doing this thing. So, um, just gonna go over a little bit of what went wrong with that first neck. So I've remade that neck, but I wanna let you guys know um, the, what specifically the problem was with that and, and the difficulty. So, you know, maybe if you're doing this yourself, you can avoid it. So the problem with the, this cut is that Z dimension is a little more than three and a half inches. So this means the bit has to protrude at least that much, a little bit more, so that when the ret retract comes up, it there's space for that, right? So in order to do that, I have to slide the spindle mount up, you know, oh, approximately an inch and a half on that Z rail. And when I do that, that puts the collet and the bottom of that Z rail pretty much right in line. Um, so normally I have it down lower and I'm cutting as far away from that Z rail as possible. So when chips collect, uh, oh, like they're gonna do, I'm cutting without dust collection. So those chips are gonna collect and uh, um, when they do and you have a big retract up into those chips, it's gonna jam, right? So a lot of folks think that you just put some wood in their CNC machine and press start and everything goes. It's not like that at all. Uh, the piece of wood I think was a little bit better. It's from the same board, but I think it's a little bit better piece of wood, so I'm really happy with the neck the way it is right now. Pore fill done is what I'm doing now on the neck and the body. Um, I'm probably not gonna show too much of that, if any. Um, we've got some really cool cuts coming up. There's really only four things left to do on this instrument. Um, we gotta cut the mortise and tenon for the neck joint. We gotta cut the inlays and the fretboard um, fret slots and then we got to do a bridge in there so i think next time what we're going to do is going to hit up that fretboard um that's going to be an interesting one i've cut lots and lots of fretboards should be really easy um and we're going to do some nice um inlay on that part and uh, i'm going to match that inlay that i did with the key inlay on that top of the rosette assembling so, we'll be playing this thing in no time so um and then on to the next instrument um when I do the mortise and tenon for the guitar, I'm gonna do the mortise and tenon for the violin at the same time. So you should see a couple of videos coming out in pretty quick succession um, when that happens. So thanks for watching, thanks for the subscriptions, and it was a fantastic year with you guys. Um, I hope for many, many more, and uh, let's just keep doing this. So we'll catch you next time.